Why does a person lose 21 grams of weight after death? Is it related to physiological processes? Or is the truth much more interesting and mystical? You'll find out very soon. How much does life weigh? That was the slogan of the film 21 Grams, which was released in 2003. Director Alejandro Inarito did not choose this slogan for nothing. He took the number not out of his head, but from the research of a scientist who lived 100 years before him. It all started when Duncan McDougall, an American physician who lived in the 19th and 20th centuries, spent a long time trying to find the answer to the question which sounded like, does man have a soul? To be more precise, the scientist was sure. Man has a soul, but how could he prove it? If it existed, it was impossible to see, which meant that no measurements could be taken. Then a brilliant idea popped into Duncan's head. What if the soul has weight? At the beginning of the 20th century, the scientists decided to conduct a series of experiments that would prove the existence of the human soul. For the experiment, McDougall ordered a huge bed with very accurate scales for those times. Next, the American scientists selected six very weak patients who were about to die. The doctor purposely selected the most weakened people so that they could not even move at the moment of death. Thus, the results of the scales would be the most accurate. One by one, the patients were placed on the bed with the scales. Duncan watched the patients closely and recorded the moment of their death. Duncan assured that no movements were made by the patients and that their weight changed immediately after death. McDougal concluded that his experiment showed that people had a soul and that it weighed exactly 21 grams, or three quarters of an ounce. Duncan was so enthusiastic about the experiment that he repeated it with 15 more dogs. However, they had no change in weight at the time of their death. According to Duncan himself, this only confirmed the authenticity of his experiment, because at the time it was believed that dogs had no soul. Consequently, McDougall's experiment was successful twice. Later, the scientists published the results of the study in scientific journals, and the New York Times wrote about it. Although McDougall's soul-weighing experiment impressed many people and continues to impress them to this day, many skeptics disagree with it, believing that the experiment had many inconsistencies. From the inability to establish the most precise moment of death to the small number of test subjects, it's their right to think so, but Duncan McDougall was sure the soul exists and something happens to it after death. But what exactly happens to it? What happens to a person after death? Of course, no one knows for sure, but there are many interesting theories. Let's look at some of them and try to understand what happens after death. In Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, and Sikhism, they believe that nothing ends after death and the soul reincarnates, which means it moves into a new body and then begins a new life. Reincarnation is one of the most common theories about life after death. This theory is supported not only by Indian religions but also by many tribes and even by ancient Greek philosophers. Reincarnation may well be the answer to the question of what happens to us after death. History knows quite a few people who apparently started life with a clean slate. For example, the story of Shanti Devi, a girl from Delhi, who started remembering her past life at the age of four. Telling everything to her parents in frightening detail is very interesting. It's quite possible that after death everything starts over again and that this cycle will never stop. I don't even know if that's good or bad. By the way, write in the comments, what do you think you were in a past life? Spread in the cosmos Many people disagree with the idea of reincarnation and say that there's nothing after death person just dies, that's all. But American anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff disagrees. He believes that after death, a person becomes part of the universe in the most literal sense. About 10 years ago, on the air of one of the programs, the American scientist said that human souls are created from some material that's much more fundamental than neurons from the very fabric of the universe. Hameroff believes that consciousness has always existed in the universe and that it could have existed from the beginning of time, that is, from the Big Bang. The anesthesiologist believes that when a person dies and his body is destroyed, the quantum information contained in protein intracellular structures is not destroyed but spread throughout the cosmos. Stuart Hameroff believes that this is why people in the state of clinical death experience near-death experiences. For example, they see a bright light or they feel they're flying through a tunnel of some kind. When doctors bring them back to life, this quantum information, which has been in the cosmos, returns to the body which is why the person remembers this unusual experience. Some of Hameroff's colleagues criticize his theory, but the scientist notes that they have so far been unable to disprove it. 
Hameroff's compatriot and colleague from the University of North Carolina, Robert Lance, also believes that death is directly related to quantum physics. However, Professor Lance doesn't think that the soul in the form of quants travels into the cosmos after death. He believes that death is an illusion altogether. Lance is a proponent of the biocentrism theory, according to which death is a deception created by our imagination. All people, according to Lance, believe in the coming of death because they've been taught to do so, or because in the human mind life is associated with the work of internal organs. However, the theory of biocentrism explains that death is perhaps not at all what people are used to understand. The professor believes that life and biology are central to reality and that it's life that creates the universe, not the other way around. This means that the shape and size of objects exist in the universe is determined by human consciousness. From the perspective of biocentrism theory, space and time are simply tools of our minds. Accepting this theory will help humans understand that death does not exist. Theoretical physicists also assume the existence of an infinite number of universes with these situations happening simultaneously and different variations of people. Lance explains that everything that's supposed to happen happens at some point between all of these universes and this suggests that death cannot exist. Math The absence or presence of life after death can be explained not only by quantum physics but also by mathematics. This conclusion was reached several years ago by Yuri Berland, a student at Ural Federal University. In 2015, he deduced the formula according to which life is a function of time, and death is the limit of this function when time tends to infinity. After doing the calculations, the student concluded that the solution to this formula is finite and that a clear and definite perception of the world awaits us after death. This, he said, proves that life after death exists. However, more experienced mathematicians criticized the student's formula and also pointed out several mistakes in his calculations. It's not known whether the student was right in deducing the formula, but it's possible that math will one day provide an answer to the question concerning life after death. The majority of skeptics who do not believe in life after death can be found among doctors, but even they can't help but change their minds after a death experience. Such was the case with neurosurgeon Eben Alexander. In 2008, he fell into a coma and was in it for seven days. His brain was kind of switched off and there simply couldn't be any glimpses of consciousness in such a state. At least, that's what he initially thought. But when Eben regained consciousness, he said amazing things that were hard for him to believe. He said he saw a light, a melody emanating from it, and something like a portal to another reality with waterfalls, butterflies, and bright colors. Was it paradise? No one knows. Maybe that was where Evan had gone for the duration of his clinical death, or maybe it was something else. The neurosurgeon even wrote a book based on his experience, Proof of Heaven, A Neurosurgeon's Journey into the Afterlife. Consciousness Professor Sam Parnia devoted many years to the study of cardiopulmonary resuscitation and clinical death. The professor came to the conclusion that after death, our consciousness continues to live for some time. Sam conducted an experiment in which more than 2,000 patients from three countries were examined. First of all, they studied people who had suffered a cardiac arrest. Of more than 2,000 patients the scientists studied, 330 survived. About half the survivors said they retained the ability to perceive what was going on around them even after clinical death. Moreover, many patients claimed to have been conscious during this period. According to Parnia, the study suggests that consciousness is not destroyed in the first minutes after death. The scientist believes that the brain shuts down within 20 to 30 seconds after the heart stops, but consciousness remains for another three minutes. Perhaps this is why people who survived clinical death saw lights in a tunnel and dead relatives and felt they were in strange places. That's all, guys. What do you think happens after death? Share your theories in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.